talk about another set of important species and those are Amphidromus, Potamodromus species and Oshimodromus species. We have in our previous lectures talked about Catadromus and Andromus species which are two forms of Diadromus species. That means they have a capability to migrate between fresh water and salt water and they complete their life cycle between fresh water and salt water. So Catadromus fishes basically lay eggs in salt water and then they mature in the fresh water. However, Andromus species are those which lay eggs in the fresh water and as an adult they are seen in the salt water. A good example of Andromus is sturgeon. A good example of Catadromus is eel. Coming on to the other three important categories is Amphidromus, Potamodromus uh, and Oceanomodromus. Now the first one which is Amphidromus is really interesting. These fishes are born in the fresh water or estuaries. They move into the sea water only as larva. As soon as the larval stage is completed, they move back to the fresh water. So important to note their life cycle, as a part of their life cycle, only the larva stage is seen in salt water. So it is not what we have talked about in the Catadromus and Andromus species. So Epidromus species, I repeat again, complete all their life cycle in fresh water except the larva stage which is seen in salt water. Some of the good examples of the Amphidromus species are sleeper. So you have big mouth sleeper which is good example. Then gobi is another good example. There are two important gobi, the river gobi and the siraju gobi which are good examples. Torrent fish is another good example. And then we also have mountain mullet and dolly warden as some of the common examples for amphidromous fishes. The next important classification that we talk about is the potamodromous species. As we mentioned, Potamodromus is similar to Andromus but don't confuse it with Andromus species because here the whole life cycle is completed within the fresh water. So they lay, lay egg in the upstream of the fresh water. With the current, these eggs go down and the fishes convert into an adult in the downstream region and these fishes further move back to the upstream to lay the eggs. The whole cycle is completed within fresh water. In the Andromus species also we have seen that laying of the eggs was part of the fresh water in the upstream but there salt water is where the adult keeps its life cycle. Here there is no role of salt water. The whole of the life cycle is completed within the fresh water itself. Just the upstream fresh water and the downstream fresh water. Now, uh, I believe you already know what is upstream and downstream. Just to clarify again, upstream is the region where the river originates. So definitely at a higher height or a higher elevation as compared to downstream. So when the eggs are laid at a higher height, they move with the flowing water in the downstream and there the fishes turn into an adult and once they are an adult fish, they further move back to the upstream region to lay the eggs. And this is what is Potamodromus species. So what are the good examples for Potamodromus species? So Lake Sturgeon is one of the very good examples. Then we have Red Horse, the sickle fin Red Horse which is there. Uh, flat headed Catfish is another good example and Robust Red horse is another good example. So those are the Potamodromus species that are seen. The last is the Oceanodromus. Now Oceanodromus is an important species because whole of the life cycle is completed within the ocean. What happens is the fishes come towards the ground region so their spawning areas are closer to the, uh, to the beaches and the rest of the whole of the life cycle is completed within the ocean. Just to lay eggs, they are coming close to the beach area and they move to the ocean back as larva. And this is what is Oceanodromus species. An important thing to note here is uh, within the oceanograph, uh, sorry, Oceanodromus species, we have grouper as a common example, but there is another species which is known as granian. Now, when we talk about granians, they are not exactly Oceanodromus, but the idea is granians come in mass to lay eggs onto the beach. They lay eggs within the beach. Uh, they hide their eggs 
in the sand and then they go back but this whole life cycle of grunion is governed by the tides so every 15 days uh, when there is a hatching cycle they come here they spawn and then uh, the eggs they move with the current back after 15 days of when there is a spring tide into the oceans and that is how grunions behave so oceanodromous species they come here just to lay eggs close to the beach area grunions lay eggs deep within the soil of the beach area so that's the difference and they are governed grunions are governed by the uh, tides so spring tide is through which they are governed and then we do have some other important behaviors of the fish that we would understand in other lectures but as we said oceanodromas complete their life cycle in the ocean itself good examples are groupers so golian grouper black grouper are good example and then we also have the uh, mutton snapper which is another good example for oceanodromous fishes so that was about understanding the amphidromous oceanodromous and potamodromous species besides the catadromous and endromous species both of which the catadromous and endromous are part of diadromous fish uh, fishes which we have covered in a separate lecture we would be covering many more interesting lectures for you stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead